let's create a new class called metal count. So we're going to make a class that models a table um, that we could use to keep track of the number of bronze, silver, and gold medals for different countries in the Olympics. I am a huge fan of the Olympics. So getting ready for next summer. Um, so put your name and today's date if you like. And I'm going to delete all the template starter code because we're going to do our own thing. Oops, I misspelled my class name. Metal count. There we go. Um, in this example, we're going to have seven different countries. So in our table, we'll have seven different rows. I'm going to make some constants to represent this. So I'm going to say final int countries equals seven. And final int metals equals three, meaning one column for gold, one column for silver, one column for bronze. The good news with two-dimensional arrays is that they work exactly like one-dimensional arrays. Because in reality, there's no such thing as two-dimensional arrays in Java. Java only supports one-dimensional arrays. It's just that we can have a one-dimensional array of anything, including other arrays. Um, so from a syntax perspective, um, this will be very familiar um, as we go along. So first thing that's similar, we can use an array literal to initialize our 2D array. So let's do that as an example first. Because if we know the values um, of all the elements in our 2D array, this is certainly a really easy way to create it. So we can use array literals to create 2D arrays. And we do that by nesting the curly brackets. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm going to create a private instance variable. And this is its type. So reading from right to left, it is an array of arrays of integer values. So that's why there's two sets of curly brackets, because it's an array where each value is itself a reference to another array where each value is an integer. And we could have three-dimensional, four-dimensional, five-dimensional arrays if we want. We just keep putting more square brackets on there. I have no idea what we'd use a five-dimensional array for, but we can certainly do it. We're going to call this variable counts. And when I initialize it with an initializer list, I like to use multiple lines in my code so that it literally looks like a table. Okay, So I'm going to add the first pair of curly brackets here represents the outer array. right? So this represents our array where each element is itself going to be an array of values. Each inner array will be its own row. So my first element is itself an array with three integer values. So this array literal right here represents the first row in my table. And each value is separated by commas, just like it was when we did regular one-dimensional arrays. But now I have a comma between this entire array element. And on the next line of code, I'll put in the second row. And these are just different, like, like different metal counts. So I'll just make up a bunch of different values. We're early on in the Olympics. There aren't that many medals awarded yet. This country doesn't have any yet, but there's still plenty of time. And we do need a semicolon at the end. So when I'm making a, an array literal for a two-dimensional array, I like to visually format it in this fashion to make it easy to see like, oh yeah, I made a table. There are seven rows. There are three columns. I can visually see the table that I'm representing in the two-dimensional array.
This works great when we know how many rows we have, and we know how many columns we have, and we know the values for all those rows and columns. There are times we don't know that. So in addition to using an array literal, we can use the new operator just like we did um, with one-dimensional arrays as well. So let's write a constructor as an example. So this constructor will, this will be the constructor for objects of class metal count. So public metal count. My constructors have no return type, not even void. Must have the same name as the class. Little refresher for that. So here's an alternate way, alternate way to create a 2D array. We're going to just do part of it, but the initialization would be followed by nested loops to initialize each element. So we could say this.counts, that's our two-dimensional array, variable that references our two-dimensional array, equals new, so we're using the new operator, just like we did with the one-dimensional array. What do we want? We want a new array of integer values with countries, number of rows, and metals, number of columns. So we always specify the number of rows first, and the number of columns second. So since countries has a value of seven and metals has a value of three, this would create a new two-dimensional array with seven rows and three columns. And then we would need like nested for loops. So we'd have like four and we go through each and every row and we'd make a new one-dimensional array um, our, we go through every row and we go through every column um, and we'd initialize each and every element. Okay. And we could do that if we need to. I'm going to actually comment this out um, so that it will, otherwise this code is going to override our array literal. So I want it in our notes for reference, but I don't want it to actually execute because it will mess up our, our plan. So we can use the new operator, we can use array literals, they both work. All right, so I said that a good high-level conceptual model of a 2D array is a Google spreadsheet. We need a more sophisticated mental model that represents how does this actually work in Java. Okay. And so I've got a couple different pictures for you. Here's the first picture. We're going to see that there's, there's two different ways that we can represent a 2D array um, in programming languages in gener general. And it all has to do with, with what we consider first, whether it's rows or columns. In Java, we almost always do what is called row major. What row major means is that the value of the first element is a reference to another array, and the values in that array represent a given row. Okay? So that's what we mean by row major. By default, assume that we're always doing row major unless you're specifically told otherwise. Okay. So when we create a new 2D array, inside the first square brackets is the number of rows, second square bracket is the number of columns. And visually, this is what it, what it looks like. We could do things in a column major approach, where the first element in our array is a reference to another array with values, but those values represent a given column as opposed to a given row. These two arrays, from the computer's perspective, are exactly the same. It's simply a matter of how we interpret them. That is, do we have an array where each element is a reference to a row? That's this one. Or do we have an array where each element is a reference to a column? Java doesn't care. It's like how we choose to interpret it. So we're going to stick with this one almost always. Okay. So we'll always deal with an array of rows, two arrays, where each element is a column. I think the best way to visualize this is to actually run this little snippet of code. So in this little snippet of code, I made a smaller matrix 
I have three rows <coughs> and four columns. And what I love about the Java Visualizer is we can actually see how does this work in the computer's memory. The local variable matrix, its value, the value written on the post-it note, is a reference to somewhere in the computer's memory. What's stored in the computer's memory? Well, three values. Those three values are themselves references to each row in this table. So the first element is a reference to somewhere else in the computer's memory where there's room for four elements with the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the value at index 1 is a reference to somewhere else in computer's memory, where there's four values 1, 12, 13, 14. And the last element is a reference to somewhere else in the computer's memory with these four values. So it's really critical that you have this more sophisticated model that when you're programming and when you're thinking about how Java works, that you're thinking that a two-dimensional array isn't really anything more than a one-dimensional array where each value is a reference to another one-dimensional array. And we choose to interpret that as a table, as a two-dimensional array. And the reason why that's important is because if you have this more sophisticated mental model, we can do stuff like this. We can create, so I'm going to execute this highlighted line of code in yellow. We can create another variable called new row. The value of new row, the value written on that new post-it note, is a reference to the computer's memory where there are now five elements, 101 through 105. But here's the cool thing. Because matrix, the value, the value of the elements in matrix are just references to arrays of integers, we can replace, this is what the next line of code is going to do, we're going to get the value of new row and the value of new row is just this reference. And we're going to set the value at index 1 in matrix, which is the one highlighted in red here. Oops, red. We're going to replace that value to refer to here instead. And that's what we just did. We just replaced the second row in our table with, this, with these five values. And here's the interesting thing. Now it's not so much of a table anymore. Our first row has four elements, our second row has five elements, and our third row has four elements, and that's totally okay. Our two-dimensional arrays do not have to be rectangular. Every row can have a different number of elements. There's no problem with that. So when we say something like the highlighted line of code, matrix sub 1, that means, okay, what's the value of matrix? It's this reference. Follow that. Sub 1, get the value of the element at index 1 follow that reference, sub 3, get the value at index 3, return that value, it's 104, and sure enough, what's retrieved and stored in the local variable value is 104. So this is the mental model you need for 2D arrays. And I think the Java Visualizer, which is linked from our resources page, is a really good way to help you create that mental model, help you visualize that. Pause here for a moment. Questions at this point about our mental models, our visualizations, syntax related to 2D arrays before we do anything more with them. Well, in general, there's three things that we do with two-dimensional arrays. Um, any of the algorithms we, we wrote last week, we could incorporate in this way. But with two-dimensional arrays, either we want to look at every single element, meaning we want to go through every row. And for every row, we want to look at every column. And that's essentially what you did in the Game of Life lab. We just The two-dimensional array was just hidden from you. It was abstracted by the grid interface. Um, or maybe we don't care about every row and every column and every value. We might want to perform some sort of operation on just one row and look at every value in that row. Or maybe we, we want to look at just one specific column and do some sort of operation with every vi value in that column. So we're going to write three methods back in our metal count class for each of those three different operations. 
Um, and for the first one, we're just going to print out all the values. But you could certainly calculate a sum, an average. You could search. You could do any of those common array operations that we did previously. So let's write a method. And this method will, this method prints the entire table. So public void print table. If we're trying to print the entire table, we need nested for loops. Okay, because we have to go through every row, and for every row, we got to go through every column. So let's write a for loop. And I strongly encourage you to name your loop variables row and column. Because I think using variables such as i and j can get confusing, which is the row and which is the column. Using x and y gets really confusing, because um, x values are actually columns and not rows. So stick with row and column. For int row equals 0, everything is still 0 indexed. Row is less than countries. That's that constant for the number of rows we have. Row plus plus. And then the inner for loop is going to focus on the columns. So int column equals 0. Column is less than metals. Column plus plus. <clears throat> we're going to need to print the value of each column in a given row for each iteration here. So I'm going to use system.out.print, not print line, because I just want to print one value. So this.counts sub row sub column. So again, two dimensional array means we need multiple pairs of square brackets. The first square bracket pair tells us what row we want, the second what column we want. That's why we call it row major. The row comes first. And then I'm going to concatenate on a tab character just so it's formatted nicely. And then outside of the inner loop, but inside of the outer loop, let's print a new line for each row. Now, in order so Trey and Blue Jay to create a new metal count object. None of these are like static methods. We actually need to create a metal count object. As a reminder of how to do that, from your Blue Jay project window, you can right click on metal count and select new metal count. And then we get the object down here in the lower left. I can right click on that and then call the print table method. And I can see my table display. All right. Um, this works. Like, we got the table. That's good. But we could make it better. Um, and the way we can make it better is I encourage you when you work with arrays not to use constants and not to hard code the number of rows and columns. Because the array itself knows how many rows and columns it has. So I'm going to comment this out and label it good. Like, it, it works. It's functional. But then I'm going to copy and paste it down here. And we're going to make it better. Here's what can make it better. Instead of using countries, let's actually use the length of the array to figure out how many rows there are. Specifically, back to this Java Visualizer example using matrix, the length of the matrix array, the number of elements in that, is the number of rows. So we can just use the length. So I'm going to say this.counts.length. 
Thank you. Um, that is the number of rows in our two-dimensional array. Because again, our two-dimensional array is an array of arrays of values. So the length of the array <coughs> is the number of rows. So that's better. Um, similarly, we can make the inner for loop better. So I'm going to label this good, but we're going to make it better. And the way we're going to make it better is we're not going to use metals. We're going to use the length as well. But here's where we got to be careful. Switching back to the visualizer, if I want to get the number of columns, I can't just get the length of the variable because that's the number of rows. But if I look at the first element in the array and get the length of that array, that is the number of columns. So I could write this as this dot counts sub zero. That returns a reference to the, to the array that is the row. And then I can do the length of that row is the number of columns. And that's better. Here's the question I have for you, however. There's a potential issue with this better inner for loop. What problem might we have? Whoa, you all have your hands up. This is great. All right, what's the problem? Who are? Ask her, what's the problem? Yeah, there's no requirement that our two dimensional array is rectangular, meaning that every row has the same number of columns. Um, so this has a potential issue. So let's actually, I'm going to move this up here to better, and let's do the best approach. The best approach says let's, each row might have a different number of columns. So we can't hard code the zero here. We need to actually use the loop variable row, meaning for this row, what is the length of the row? Meaning how many columns does this row have? Because it could be different. Often we deal with rectangular 2D arrays, but not always. So this structure here, in terms of variable names, in terms of using the length of the array and the length of a given row within the array, this is like best practice, best structure for iterating through every element in a 2D array. And we're going to write lots of code like this. This unit, and even after break when we come back, We'll be doing a lot of it then as well.